Hi, I'm Margie Kanner. i um, from Chicago, Illinois, and I've been face painting for about 10 years or so. Um, my girlfriend, she actually went to the Halloween show one time in Chicago, and she came back, and she's like, we got to be face painters. This is the coolest job. And I was already a hairstylist, a mom. I was, like, stressing over all those things, and I was like, no, I don't want to be a face painter. I have a job. And now I'm a face painter. <laughs> So, I mean, it really is something that kind of, I went to that Halloween show with her and then Ginny painted my face and I went home and I'm like, I'm going to be a face painter. And it was just that simple. It's like, I made up my mind. My father was a cartoonist, so he was one of those really amazing cartoonists that you could say, draw this, and he could draw anything, anytime. He used to draw in these little eggs when we were kids. He'd make little caricatures of, of us at Easter, and we'd sit around. We'd color all the eggs except for seven of them for him to paint all seven of us. It was pretty cool. It's a pretty cool thing. So, um, so he inspired me a lot, but he, he actually wanted to go to New York and, you know, take his career to another level, but my mom wanted him to stay in Chicago. So he divorced her and got happy. <laughs> <laughs> and that's sort of what I did. <laughs> Can I say that? <laughs> you know, I, I started going to the convention. Number one thing, I went to the Fabaic. And I think I've missed two of all of them. And people would say, you've got to compete. If you don't compete, you're never going to teach. And, you know, you've got you to do this, you've got to do this. And they would tell me what I had to do. And that's like the total, the last thing you can do for me. Because if you tell me I have to do something, I'm never going to do it. I'm going to do it my way. So I watched everybody, and I learned a little bit. Christopher Agostino used to always say, you know, his designs across the room, you saw it. It was bold. It was bright. You knew what it was. So he was one of those people that really inspired me to, you know, tell a story, to make it fun, to, to how to, to make a line work, all those things. But uh, I like to cartoon. So I started cartooning on my legs all the time, just kind of, going to all the classes and then doing my thing, taking a little of this person, a little of that person, a little of this, that. And, uh, and that's where it happened. Well, you know, I, I was painting butterflies on my face every day in the mirror, painting these stupid little butterflies, getting them all pretty and figuring it out because I didn't have anybody to paint. I was in my bathroom, you know, kids were at school and sh -sh -sh -sh, paint my face. And then my daughter came home and we went to a rainforest cafe. And they were like, oh, my God, that's such a beautiful butterfly. Who did that? And I said, I did. And so they were like, you want a job every Wednesday night, kids' night? How much do you charge? And I was like, mm, $125. An hour? Yeah. And they were like, oh, we only have 125 in the budget. Can you do two hours for that? <laughs> I never painted anywhere before. I was like, um, I guess I can if it's a weekly thing. You know, I played it really cool like I knew what I was doing. And then I went home and went, oh. God, how am I going to do this? So then I went in the mirror and I started painting the rainforest frog and I couldn't fit it anywhere except for right on my nose. So it would work, you know, and I painted them. And then I was moving my face because it's animated and it started to move and I was like, oh, that's cool. So then I started painting those every Wednesday, frogs on the nose and butterflies and people were, oh. And it wasn't even that good. My, my line work was pretty bad, but it was still different. So people liked it because it was different. And then I started to date David, my uh, cartoonist. He was an amazing caricature artist. And he used to come and watch me paint. He's like, you got to paint more of those. You got to do more of that. You got to do that. And then Marcella's like, you got to paint more of those. You got to do more of those. <laughs> so everybody's telling me to do more of these. And so then I just started figuring them out and painting little cartoons. And now I have two books. So I guess, and a third one that I'm working on. Yeah, and I travel the world teaching, playing, and playing with all my friends, and they call it a job, and I, I don't get that. It's never been a job. I just go out there and play with people, and corporate says, can you do this? And I say yes, and, and then they ask me how much, and I tell them, and they're like, okay. It's, it's about being confident. You know, you don't just go out there and say, well, I, I think I could do it for, I don't know, what's your budget? Never ask them what your budget is. Tell them what you're going to charge per hour. Go up a little higher. Be worth it. And then they, they pay it. They don't even blink an eye. And then you go play with your friends. It's that easy. Well, I didn't really, 
at the point of face painting, I owned a hair salon for a really, really long time. And um, then I had three babies. And they were a lot of work. And I had a partner in the, in the uh, hair salon. And she was always drama. Always, always complaining about everything. And she was like, I could do this on my own. And I was like, okay, go ahead. And I let her. I said, take it. I, I didn't want to go to work every day. I had little kids that had real issues, you know, like needed their diaper change and stuff. And she was acting like she needed her diaper change. I don't work with people like that. I had to go. It was time for me to leave. So then I built a little salon in my basement, and I did hair at home for a while. And uh, I was just bored. So I think face painting came to me when I was bored. You know, the kids were starting to get a little bigger. They never let me paint their face. Kids never do. Your own kids are like, no, Mom, no. All their friends come over. They want to be painted. So I practiced on them, but mostly on myself. <sighs> well, as far as going into face painting on your own, you know, I was, I was um, going through a divorce. I told my ex-husband, I don't want to do this anymore. He said, you're going to fail. Oh, geez. No, I'm not. So I figured out how I can do this for me. So, you know, never let somebody tell you you can't do it because you can. You just have to figure out how to do it, how it's going to work with these kids, with this that you have to do, all these other things. Paint your best work. I used to make little sample flyers. I still do. I send them out to all my contacts via email. But in the beginning, I didn't have the email. I didn't have a website. And I had a friend who helped me build a website. And I took all my best work, and I collaged it on a paper. And I you know, made the little tabs with the phone numbers on them and cut them. And I put them everywhere, everywhere I could in Chicago. And I was making faces. Making faces was the name of my business. And my friend said, change it to Making Faces Chicago, because that sounds so much bigger. It's not just Making Faces McHenry, Making Faces. It's Chicago. So I did that, and people started calling. And then I was getting a little corporate gigs. I went all over Chicago, dropping off my flyer. I went in there, and I said, who's, who's in charge of booking your parties and your, your special events? Find out who it is, and try to get that sample page to whoever that is. It's that simple. Just do it. And if they say no, you say, okay, bye. You don't take it personal. You just figure it out. Then I'm positive. You know, if you have a positive attitude, no matter how you paint, you know, people are like, oh, someday I want to paint like you. I remember thinking, I want to paint like that guy, and I want to paint like that guy. And then I realized, I'm never going to paint like that guy or that guy. I got to paint like me. And figure out your own style. And sometimes it takes forever. You got to copy everybody's work a thousand times and then start to develop it. You know, when I teach my workshops, I teach people not just to copy what I'm doing. I teach them how to develop their cartoons, how to build them from the inside out. And then at the end of my class, I won't tell because then they'll, they have to do it themselves. But I make them build something and then I make them explain how they would put it on the face. So it starts to open up your mind and make you think you know, about what you want to do, how you're going to figure it out, how you're going to create it. So you have to get your mind ticking. You know, sometimes you're put on the spot. I used to go out with uh, David, and he was my cartoonist, and he was always next to me drawing his pictures, and a kid would come up and say, I need a platypus. And he, I'd be like, draw me a platypus. And he'd draw it, and then I could copy it, and I'd be like, okay, thanks. But he's not with us anymore. So now... I have to think about what a platypus will look like. If I can't figure it out, I take out my iPhone, cartoon image. You can cartoon image anything in your phone, take a look at it, and then make it your own. It's, it's simple once you do it a thousand times. You just got to do it a thousand times. And do yoga. And do yoga. And eat healthy. And drink your milk. And, and, and bring Mr. Bill with to all events. Because you can mess with them. Oh, and you know what? Market yourself with a sticker. This little sticker says, Oops, I Arted. It says, Oops, I Arted. It's got my website on it. So every time I paint a child, I take the sticker out, boom, I put it right there on their chest. Or, you know, wherever. <laughs> I can't say that. Can I? Yeah. Oh. I, I take it out, I put it right there on their chest. They walk around all day long. 
They've got my picture, my website. People are going, who did that? Boom, it's there. It's, a, it's your billboard. It's the best advertising you can do. Because people lose cards. They don't lose stickers. They wash the sticker. It's still there. But, you know, it's a good way to... You have to market yourself. You have to stand out in a crowd. Do something different, you know, that's out of the norm. Everybody paints a certain, you know, butterfly or a certain mask. Twist it, turn it, make it your own so that when you're in a group of face painters, there's three or four painting with you, your work is different, you know. They're going to notice that little tweak, that little different. And your personality, stay happy <laughs> even when it's 100 degrees and the line is long and people are angry. If you're angry too, everybody's angry. So just figure it out.